Hi, my name is Andrew G, and I'm a junior at West Windsor Plainsboro High School South. I want to talk to you today on the subject of global warming, and more specifically, its effects on the ocean. Now, this involves a whole host of issues that affects everyone on Earth, that affects everyone on Earth today, as well as all future generations. This includes uh, global sea level rise, ocean acidification, and other very dire issues. So uh, some doubt ocean acidification's uh, credibility or even its existence. But the reality is, is that it's a very real problem. Right now, 48% of people in the United States live uh, in these highlighted regions. That's 125 million people. All these people could be affected by global sea level rise. So imagine for a second that you're on a vacation to Key West and you're enjoying all the local culture and the key lime pie. But step back for a second, in 100 years, that entire place could be underwater. And it's even worse than that. When you come back home, if you live close to shore, your community might also be underwater. So this is a very real issue. Now, some people um, doubt its existence, but this is uh, a graph of climate data taken uh, in Hawaii. The part I want to focus on is in the bottom right, that green trend line. Now, that represents the ocean pH. Now, you may notice that it's only a difference of about 0 0.05 on the pH scale, but when you do the math, it turns out to be a 12% increase in the concentration of ions. And it's even worse on a, world, on a global scale. So, uh, compared to pre-industrial levels, um, the concentration of ions has increased by 30%. NOAA defines um, ocean acidification as the reduction in the pH of the ocean uh, over a long period of time. That means it's getting more acidic or towards the red side. So the most logical way to fight this is to push it back towards the blue side. So that's exactly what UDOS, or the Underwater Deacidification System, will do. So UDOS uh, takes advantage of its funnel-shaped mouth to pull in water. And it pushes that water through uh, a fine sieve or filter to take out sands sediments, seaweed, whatever is floating around in the water. And it will use a chemical reaction to uh, try and mitigate the effects of um, the ocean acidification. It uses a combination of sodium hydroxide and calcium solutions. Sorry, this is a lot of chemistry. Um, but in essence, uh, it turns it, uh, it takes an intermediate form of uh, carbonic acid into calcium carbonate, sodium, water, and heat. Now that calcium carbonate is actually very useful because in ecosystems that are the most affected by ocean acidification are often the ones that have shelled marine organisms. And calcium carbonate is a material uh, from which their shells are built. So this can actually, uh, this is actually double win for those ecosystems. The heat that is produced in, this react in these reactions can also be used um, as a uh, power source for UDOS through a series of heat pumps. Now after this, um, UDOS uses uh, a combination of a proton sponge and um, a centrifuge to try and get out all that extra sodium. Remember all the sodium that we produced? There's two atoms of sodium for that one reaction. We're trying to get that out through a molecular sponge and centrifuge. So the molecular sponge essentially does what a sponge does. It soaks in all of the uh, sodium and also uh, hydrogen ions that are floating in the water. Now when you use a high-speed centrifuge, um, it's possible to separate those from the, um, it's possible to separate those from the rest of the water. Now once uh, all of this is done, um, you'd have spews the water out of the back, and, it's mon and the water goes through uh, a series of uh, tests. Uh, first, um, it's run through a pH meter, which uh, is to see if it's actually working and if it's working to the correct extent. 
it's actually bad if um, the pH is going up by too much because that will cause because that will cause even more damage than if it were just basic uh, if it were just acidic. It also goes through a conductivity meter um, to test if the water is too saline because um, it has to make sure that the proton sponge and centrifuge combination is working correctly. Now, of course, things can go wrong. Um, there can be unintended chemical reactions. There can be vital microorganisms in the environment killed uh, due to shearing within the um, centrifuge. But with time and patience and a lot of science, they can be solved and even turned into advantages. UDOS doesn't only have to be used um, in the setting of marine ecosystems. It can also be used in uh, city water reservoirs in order to cycle through the water and kill any microorganisms that might be waterborne and harmful um, to humans drinking from it. However, UDOS is just a drop in the bucket in the fight against climate change. Other initiatives like Guardians of the Coast and uh, active carbon capture are actively fighting to uh, mitigate the effects of pollution and uh, carbon dioxide release into the atmosphere. We all need to work together to fight this issue. A simple Google search can help you uh, get hundreds of possible everyday solutions to uh, help fight against uh, global warming. For instance, you can um, take a shower instead of take a bath. That saves water. Um, you can save electricity by turning off the lights when you don't need them. And you can save a lot of energy, 75% actually, by changing from uh, incandescent light bulbs to LED light bulbs. I think John Lady said it best. Uh, climate change is the environmental challenge of this generation. And it is imperative that we act before it is too late. Thank you.